It was three days before we actually went to Holland because the weather over in Holland was so bad that we couldn't possibly find the dropping zone. We had to stay at 500 feet, uh, so the orders were, and drop down to 50 feet over the field with a red cross on it. It was an actual fact, it was a racetrack near The Hague. Um, that's all we got told about it. And quite frankly, that's all we wanted to know about it. it was, uh, we weren't, as I say, we weren't absolutely, you know, shin up with it sort of thing. We thought it was a little bit risky. Anyway, the day came on the Sunday, I think it was the Sunday, on the 29th, I remember the day, the, the, the date, the 29th of April, 1945. And they gave us the all clear to go, and we went, we went out to the kite about three times before we actually took off. Um, they said, yes, all right, we, we can go. So we, we went off with the two of us. Um, and we went across the North Sea, with no problem, and we found the, uh, we did a, a map reading uh, business with the, to find the, the uh, racetrack. We had been informed of the steeples, the church steeples and anything that was sticking up very high because we weren't too high. We went down lower than 500 feet. Um, in fact, you, can, you could almost touch the, the rooftops. Uh, we, were, we did that because we wanted to get out outside or under the radar of the Germans. Now, when we came across the, the coast, the Germans, we, cut, we could see their guns pointing at us, and they followed us across the sky until we left, until we got out of sight. And they, the others, too, every, any, any time that we saw guns, they were following us around. So that didn't make us feel too happy about it, because you only wanted one um, slap-happy sort of, uh, you killed my father last week, bang, you know, sort of thing. And we wouldn't have stood much chance at all. And we knew this. That was the problem. We knew this. And it was uh, a bit hairy. But um, we, soon found the, we soon found the racetrack. It, that was no, no trouble. In fact, we could practically touch the roofs of the houses. That's how low we were. It was quite a, quite a unique idea for us to be that low over anybody's territory sort of thing. So, and we dropped the food, as we were told to. And they were in hessian sacks in the Bombay. The Bombays were opened, the hessian sacks were pushed in, and in the hessian sacks was all sorts of uh, uh, tins of um, egg powder, flour, uh, in bags of flour, black chocolate, I do remember that. There was lots of things that, that, that could be used for food, obviously. And we opened the Bombays and dropped the food, and they bounced along the ground, and, and that was that. And they, they go, the Dutch police were there to, 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 to give it out afterwards, I suppose. When I first was told the story of the Bad Penny, it was in its entirety, you know, from the time of the, uh, the food drop mission that the, uh, uh, the crew flew, the Bad Penny crew flew, uh, to the story of 50 years later, a, uh, a boy at the time of World War II now has immigrated to Canada and he meets the crew because, and is very thankful to the crew for what they did by starting the food because as you, as anyone that knows the story of Operation Man and what they call the Hunger Winter in Holland, it was a very uh, stressful time for the people in Holland, the Dutch, because many were, were starving. Um, but the whole thing, it comes full circle. You have a, a situation, you have a group that responds, and then you have, you know, 50 years later, a, uh, a thank you in person from people that were total strangers and uh, have now come together, you know, 50 years later and all, are all very friendly and still very, uh, you know, uh, happy that they've had a chance to meet together. And so when you hear the whole story in the context, it just said, you know, this is a terrific opportunity to uh, have a story made into, in my opinion, a children's book and, not, and an illustrated children's book, not just write a story down and hope people uh, can have it. So that was my, my first thought when I heard the story was it just, it was, it had to be a children's book. There was only two of us that went that morning very early and in the afternoon, 250 planes took off from England and went over there to different places and dropped uh, a lot of food, obviously. And, and they continued to do so for the next right. few days. We had done, we, we finished up with six trips. Although the, the first one was a little bit hairy, the rest of them were no problem at all.
Right. And the people outside, the people were absolutely marvelous. After, when they were told that we were coming over, not us particularly, but the, the British were coming over with this food, they were all out in the streets and on top of the buildings with flags. You never see so many flags in all your life. Where they got all the Union Jacks from and they're the Dutch flags, it was absolutely amazing. I thought to myself, if the Germans see them with that lot, they'll kill them. But uh, no, they got away with blue murder. And well, you said earlier... Mo a most pleasant job that we have to, had to do, and that's what it really was. For younger kids, younger children, particularly, they're very interested in picture books and story books. And if, you could, if uh, history could be somehow redefined in a very simple way, but yet with pictures, but tell the, the essence of the story, I think it'd be really relevant to try to teach history uh, to younger generations this way. I remember in high school, uh, taking American history, you know, it was very, very dry. It's still probably that way today with all history. You know, you, you're uh, given a textbook, uh, here's what happened, here's the dates, these are important, remember these dates. And so you, you remember certain things and then you forget certain things and you also probably come away, unless you're a historian already, you really don't appreciate the fact that history is really the thing that defines who we are at this present time in our lives. So if you could come out with a nice, uh, much more simplistic, but yet, uh, what's the word, identifiable possibly, uh, way of teaching history, rather than just here, remember this, memorize this, and then just have it just a list, I think it would be a very uh, unique way uh, presenting history, particularly to the younger, to the younger kids. And if, of course, you teach history young, then they'll remember it longer.